Hello everyone, this is Kat and welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. This will be the continuation of Swallow the Stars. This will be Part 8, Chapter 8, entitled Chance Encounters. Summer break swoops in and out of nowhere, surprising Izuka more than anyone until Aizawa had mentioned it literally yesterday. Izuka had assumed that his new routine wouldn't change until he himself was enrolled in school, but now he's staring out the window, it's late morning, and both Shota and Hizashi are in the apartment in civilian attire, talking about a street festival and... No one is mentioning school at all. It's bizarre. I'm not going, Shota says, sitting in front of a box fan and a tank top and sweatpants, hair tied up off his neck. He reminds Izuku of what Leo looked like when the cat had slipped and fell into the bathtub. It's nearly enough to make him giggle, but he doesn't think Aizawa would be amused. So to save himself some face and an explanation of what exactly he finds so funny, Izuku muffles the sound and looks at Izashi instead. He's also sporting a tank top, though he is wearing shorts to expose even more skin in hopes of staying cool. His hair is tied up at the top of his head in a loose bun, and his glasses keep sliding down his nose from the gathering sweat. It's hot, and Izuku has never been more glad that he asked if he could get his hair cut back in June, although it's already getting a little long again. Two months putting a few centimeters of length back into the dark curls. He's the only one not sporting a tank top, simply because he doesn't have one and he doesn't really want one. Some of his scars extend from his shoulders to his biceps, and he'd rather keep them covered. Come on, show. It's a street festival. It's only going to be here for the weekend, and then poof, gone until next year. Izashi's trying his hardest. He really is. But Aizawa's simply not having it. It's amusing, like watching a puppy convince a grouchy old cat to play with it. Nazashi's lucky, Izuku thinks, that he's someone Aizawa's fond of, or else he would have gotten claws brandished at him for his troubles. I'll go, Izuku offers both out of a desire to see what Izashi's talking about and to get Izashi's energy focused away from Aizawa. I've never been to a street festival before. Izashi throws his hands up in excitement. Hell yeah, little listener, that's my boy. Izuku blushes, but Izashi carries on regardless. Street festivals are so much fun. There's food, games, prizes, and fireworks at the end, and this one's really close by, so we won't even have to take the train, and we can stay as long as we want. He goes on to explain what last year's festival was like, complete with the games that he'd lost and the food that he'd eaten. Izuku laughs and waves his hands in front of him, trying to ward off Hizashi's long-winded explanation. Okay, okay, you don't have to convince me. He laughs again, at the sheepish look Hizashi gives him, an apology written in the lines of his face with the way that he rubs the back of his head. When do we go? Usually around sundown, Hizashi says, but he glances at Aizawa when they both shake their heads. Although, since this is your first time, we can probably head out pretty soon, and we'll be quite as busy, and we'll be able to take our time, stay as long as we want. Because of Izuku's panic attacks, he understands that Izashi's being considerate of him just as much as he understands that he won't be able to convince Izashi, or Aizawa for that matter, since they're both in agreement, to change his mind. Which is fine, really, because Izuku doesn't like having panic attacks, and hasn't gotten completely over his fears of crowds and enclosed spaces. He's getting there. Kiyumi-san says he's making really good progress, but he's still carrying the facility around on his shoulders, and he hasn't quite figured out how to put it down yet. Okay, Isuku agrees easily, smile already in place. He's excited about the festival, excited about spending time with Izashi, who he doesn't see nearly as often as he sees Aizawa, despite their legal joint custody of him, simply because he doesn't live with Izashi, and he's not going to let his stupid trauma ruin his day. Can we go now? Izashi laughs, and Aizawa blows out an amused tough through his nose. Rock on, little listener, let's go. He gets to his feet and holds his hand out to help Izuku up. They put their shoes on together, both of them brimming with excitement, but they're stopped by Izawa before they can open the door. If you're not going to be back by dinner, he says, and when Izuku turns around to look at him, he finds Izawa on his back on the floor, mostly hidden by the low table. Text me to let me know. You got it, Izashi calls back, a bit louder than necessary, before ushering Izuku out the door. As they descend the steps to the street, Hisashi chatters about his radio show, new songs that have come out, and an artist that's on the rise into fame that he wants to interview before her time is capitalized by her studio and contract obligations. Once they've walked a couple of streets, he turns the conversation back to Izuku. So, how are your studies going lately? English is great, obviously, and Shota tells me that you're doing really well, but I want to hear it from you. History is boring. It's the first thing that Izuku says, and it earns him a gut-bursting laugh from Hizashi. I know it's important, but it's only interesting when Nezu asks me to study strategies involved in old wars, to analyze them like I do with quirks, or to talk about when it's possible quirks would have started manifesting, but only Nezu wants me to do that. Aizawa teaches me the boring bits. 
He wants to make sure you have a balanced education, Izashi says, taking on a sage tone that doesn't suit him at all. I know. He doesn't whine. He doesn't. Math is fine, since it's a lot of memorization, but it's hard to think of how it would be ever useful to me. Most of the subjects are actually fun to learn, in the backwards way that Aizawa has been teaching him. Reading and assignments first, then lessons, but math is strange. It's more theoretical than I thought it would be, especially when I'm going through the worksheets on my own, and Aizawa's not very good at it either, so the lessons afterwards don't really help. It is, unfortunately, true that Aizawa's bad at math. He understands the basics, but it's funny to watch him read out of the books when it comes time to go over the mistakes Izuku had made on his worksheets. Maybe it'll make more sense when he gets to middle school and has a proper math teacher to explain it to him, or maybe he'll have a weird distaste of math his whole life, just like Aizawa. He covers the rest of the subjects quickly, mentions that 2A had been bringing him to lunch consistently for the last several weeks, which Hizashi's pleased about for some reason, and starts to talk about his lessons with Amahaki. It's really hard to get a handle on it, Izuku says, his hands clenching in fists before relaxing again. I thought it would get easier if I talked to it, but really that just gave me a starting line. It's not like fire or shadow or wind that I can manifest and try to hold on to it, so it's frustrating that practice has been just me sitting in the living room with one of my palms uncovered, trying to hold it back for as long as possible. Have you been getting better at that, though? Hizashi asks, clearly already knowing the answer and just wanting Izuka to admit it. Yes, but it's just... He can keep his palm open for 15 minutes now before practically collapsing, and he can maintain holding back on the hockey's power, even when conversing with Aizawa, but... I'm frustrated that I don't have a better understanding of it, that I'm at a level right now that a normal child would be with their quirk around the age of five or six. I'm frustrated because I know that I can control it, but it's so dangerous to practice with it that we can't set anything up, and all I'm doing is stamina training. Hizashi hums, slipping his hands into his pockets and leaning back to look up at the cloudless sky. Maybe you just need to find the right place to train. I'll do some looking around tomorrow and see if I can dig anything up. In the meantime... He grins suddenly and looks toward Izuku. Shota told me a secret, and I'm not supposed to tell you, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Izuku's eyes gleam, and he claps his hands together as he faces Izashi properly, even if it means that he's walking sideways now. What is it? Laughing, Izashi straightens, and he leans down, giving a conspiratorial glance before lowering his voice to a fake whisper. Shota's working on a physical training menu for you, and you're going to start tomorrow. Really? Izuku's definitely too loud, but he can't help it. He's been eager to start exercising, especially since Recovery Girl told him just last week that he's at a reasonably healthy weight for a kid his age and height. But Aizawa had been in the middle of finals week, and they hadn't had a chance to talk about it properly since. Yes! Izashi ruffles his hair and guides him around a corner into the next street. Try to act just as excited tomorrow, or else he'll know that I told you. Promise! God, he's so excited. Absolutely nothing can ruin today. They reach the festival a few minutes later, and Izuku grinds to a halt on the outskirts. It's not very big, but it's loud and bright and full of people. Izashi had mentioned that at the time of day, it's less busy right now, and Izuku's suddenly very glad that they're not here at night. This is horrifying, he says, but there's a hesitant smile on his face that grows in confidence as the seconds pass. Something he's learned in the past few months is that he loves challenges, Loves pushing himself and seeing what he can do, not just to improve so that he can use Amahaki, but simply because he likes to set new goals, surpass them, and be praised by the people who notice, usually Aizawa and Hizashi, but Nezu has made a passing comment or two as well. And really, the praise is the least of it, though it is nice because it's novel to him. Really, he just likes to prove himself wrong. I'll never be able to walk around the mall without having a panic attack. Wrong. I'll never be able to go somewhere without... Aizawa Hizashi to mediate. Wrong. I'll never be able to take off my bandages without having a breakdown first. Wrong. Hizashi looks at him, eyebrows raised, but when Izuku grabs his hand and steps forward, he laughs and follows along. The crowd seems to be made up of mostly students. Summer break had just started, and they're already making the most of their time off from school. There are a lot of families around, too. Mothers holding on to their children with their hands and fathers carrying kids on their shoulders, older siblings chasing after younger siblings. Some people walk down the row of stalls alone, but they're few and far between. Izuku comments on his observation to Izashi, who nods and says, Well, it's no fun to come to a festival alone. Half the point is to get people you love to come with you. People you love? Oh. 
If they weren't in the middle of a crowded street, full of noise and laughter and delicious smells from the food stalls, Izuku thinks he probably would have started crying. Instead, he beams and hugs Izashi around his waist. Izashi chuckles and puts a hand on top of Izuku's back and slowly rubs up and down his spine. When Izuku pulls away, he doesn't miss the happy but slightly wet look to Izashi's eyes, but he also doesn't say anything about it. Shall we go? Izashi asks, gesturing down the street with a wide sweep of his hand. Izuku nods rapidly and follows him, sometimes at his side, sometimes behind him. They make their way from stall to stall, looking at the contents, playing a few games, grabbing snacks. It's fun. It's stress-free. Until they're toward the end of the street, and Izuku spots a man he thought he'd never see again. He stops walking immediately, frozen solid as he watches the man, taller than anyone else around him, dark hair still cropped short, scar still moving across his mouth as he talks to whisper to whoever's with him. Izuku put that scar there, remembers the day it happened, the surge of power and the splash of blood and the screaming and the crying and the pain. His heartbeat kicks up to an uncomfortable pace, and he can feel himself struggling to breathe, but the static in his head is too loud to hear anything. Amahaki is a roiling mass of hate and darkness pushing against his ribcage, wanting to be let out, wanting to finish what it started. Izuku closes his fists tight, and is digging his fingernails into his palms even though he can't draw blood through the bandages. He needs to ground himself. He needs his ashi. Where's... Are... Are you okay? A hand waves in front of Izuku's face, tentative and not too close. Izuku turns to look, barely focused enough to take in the long, dark hair and pointed ears. No, of course you're not okay. He's not really meeting Izuku's eyes, and he looks uncomfortable and out of place, but he doesn't shy away or immediately make a scene and call for help. Here, let's get you out of the road. Careful not to touch Izuku, the newcomer. He's young, definitely a kid, probably not much older than Izuku himself. But he's definitely taller, even though he's slouched down so much that they're practically on the same level and... Shut up, shut up, shut up, you need to breathe. Take a deep breath, the kid says, before dragging in one of his own. They're away from the crowd now, tucked behind a food stall, but it's enough. Izuku sucks in a breath that's too shallow and too fast, and God, he's not good at this. The doctor was right there. Breathe, comes the next reminder. It's okay. Just breathe. Close your eyes if you have to. Izuku readily takes that advice. In the darkness behind his eyelids, Amahaki is still roiling and raging, but when Izuku winces and begs for it to settle down, it listens. He takes deep breaths when the other kid tells him to, and eventually remembers to press his fingertips into his thumb, around and around in a pattern. He focuses on that tactile feeling, focuses on breathing, and eventually the static recedes, and Suka feels safe enough to open his eyes. Thank you, is the first thing that he says. His throat is still tight and closed up from the remnants of his panic, but he doesn't feel like he's dying anymore, so that's a win. And I'm sorry for interrupting your day. Whatever confidence the boy had, while well, talking to Izuku and working him through his panic attack, it disappears the moment Izuku is coherent again. His shoulders draw up even further toward his ears, and he has a hard time making eye contact, just giving a quick glance and then looking away. It's not a problem. I... I get panic attacks, too. He used to get them a lot. They really suck in places like this. His voice is quiet, barely audible. Are you okay? Izuku nods slowly, and he tries his best not to think about the man he had seen, because if he does, he's just going to slide right back into his panic attack. I'm not good with crowds, is what he chokes out as an explanation. I got separated from... from my dad. That's the easiest way to describe Hisashi right now, and it's technically true anyway. Still, he's never called either Hisashi or Aizawa that before. Do you want help finding him? The boy looks like he is not too keen on going back into the crowd either, but... He does still offer, and that is finally what makes Izuku smile, the majority of his panic ebbing out of him. I can call him, but will you wait with me? He doesn't want to be alone. He really, really doesn't want to be alone. The boy looks relieved to not have to wade through the crowd, and he nods in agreement. I'm, uh, Amajiki. Tamaki. By the way, nice to meet you. Aizawa Izuku, he greets, giving a little bow. You can call me Izuku. He thinks that this is going to be his standard greeting from now on, especially once he gets to UA. He's decided he's going here, of course, or otherwise. Are you a student? What year are you in? Amajiki blinks rapidly at the questions and slides his eyes past Izuka's shoulders, like holding eye contact for too long is something that just physically he cannot make himself do. Izuka doesn't mind. I'm a third year in middle school. 
Oh, Izuku pulls his phone out, thumb suspended over Hisashi's number. I'm a first year. Not technically true, but he knows that's where he would be if he hadn't, you know, grown up as a research project. That makes you my senpai. He taps Hisashi's contact and brings his phone to his ear, watching with amusement as Amajiki blushes furiously over being called senpai. Izuku has half a second to wonder if that's what he himself looks like when he blushes, flustered and wishing that he was anywhere else, before Hisashi picks up. Izuku, where are you? Are you okay? What happened? I'm okay. I'm okay, Izuku promises quickly. It's mostly true, as he tries to get Hisashi to calm down. I'm... He looks around. Behind the takoyaki stall. I'll wait for you. Do you need me to stay on the line? Hisashi asked, sounding like he's already moving. No, I'm okay. I've got company. After Hisashi expresses his understanding, Izuku hangs up and pockets his phone. So, uh, Majiki-senpai, where are you going to high school? He needs to keep himself distracted, so he keeps himself from thinking about who he saw. When Hisashi gets here, he can leave and everything will be fine. But for right now, he needs to talk to the boy in front of him so that he doesn't spiral again. Well, Amajiki turns partially away, blush still in place. His eyes squint shut a little when he glances at Izuku like he's looking at something bright. For his part, Izuku just tilts his head and smiles, patiently waiting. UA, he finally says, shoulders sagging in defeat. I'm taking the entrance exam for the heroics course in February. That's awesome, me too, I mean. Izuku rubs the back of his head, looking away with a blush of his own. Not this year, obviously, but I want to go to UA for high school. Can I ask what your quirk is? Is that too personal? Or a secret? You can keep it a secret if you want to. That won't hurt my feelings. Amajiki's hands clasp and unclasp in front of himself, shoulders curled forward under the onslaught, but he does manage to meet Izuku's gaze again. It's, uh, it's called Manifest. I can, well, manifest elements of whatever food I'm digesting and use them as parts of my body. Izuku latches onto the information greedily, both out of genuine interest and a need for a distraction. Don't think about it. That's amazing, Hamajiki senpai Is it limited to only food from animals and stuff? Could you manifest roots if you ate a vegetable or fruit? Oh, but I guess you could just eat some octopus and manifest tentacles, so maybe there's not a point in experimenting with plant-based foods. Oysters would be great for defense, and a varied diet would allow for close and long-range combat. Is the manifestation limited to just your hands, or can you choose where it shows up on your body? Can you- Oh, sorry. Izuka forces himself to stop, finally registering Amajiki staring at him with wide eyes, like saucers, blush long since faded away in the face of Izuka's rambling. I analyze quirks as a hobby, but my curiosity gets the better of me sometimes. It's... okay, Amajiki says like he isn't quite sure if it really is okay or not. Do you always think like that? No, that's rude. Don't answer that. Um, to answer your questions, though, I don't know. He shrugs, looking a little helpless. I haven't thought to experiment with it that much, I guess. Izuka deflates a little at the lack of information, but he brightens back up a second later. That's okay. I haven't done much experimenting with mine, either. Amajiki gives him a look that, on anyone else, would just be a flat expression, but for him it's probably just cautious curiosity. Mine is a gravitational quirk, he explains, trying to sound normal about it even though it's still weird to introduce Amahaki as a quirk both because Izuku's been told repeatedly that he's quirkless, and will thus amount to nothing, and because reducing Amahaki to a naturally occurring genetic mutation feels insulting on some level. Increasing gravity, mostly. Finding a place to practice has been really hard. That's cool, Mamajiki says, and it sounds like he really does mean it, despite the quiet pitch to his voice and the way that he keeps turning away from Izuku. If he makes a face as he turns around completely, leaving Izuku blinking at his back, if I do more experimenting, do you... I can let you know, if you want. I just... You've given me a lot to think about. Yes, absolutely! Izuku chirps, probably too loud for Amajiki's comfort, but he's still stressed and doing everything in his power to stay calm. Don't think about it. He takes out his phone again, taps Amajiki on the shoulder with it before holding it out. Go ahead and put your number in. I'll send you a text after you have mine. Dutifully, Amajiki takes Izuku's phone and... Fills in his contact, which Izuka changes to be listed as Amajiki Senpai instead of his full name. He immediately sends a text to his new friend, his first friend, so that he doesn't accidentally forget. Nearly ten seconds later, Hisashi appears and nearly barrels into Izuku, stopping only when Izuku gives a slight shake to his head. If he's touched right now, Izuku thinks he'll explode. Don't think about it. Are you sure you're okay? Hisashi asks, his expression twisted with worry. He steps to arm's length away and looks Izuku over carefully, as if checking for injuries. Don't think about it. 
I promise, I'm fine. Izuka lies with a smile and a quick nod. I had a panic attack when we got separated, but thankfully Yamajiki-senpai found me and helped calm me down. He motions to his new friend and watches with amusement as Izashi profusely thanks him, and Yamajiki looks more and more like he wants the ground to swallow him whole. Eventually, Izuka takes pity on him and tugs on the hem of Izashi's tank top to direct his attention away from Yamajiki. Let him get back to his fun. Right, Izashi says. Sorry, little listener. He steps back, close to Izuku's side, but not touching. Izuku gives a small wave to Amajiki, his smile still plastered on his face. Bye, Amajiki senpai. Please let me know if you discover anything cool about your quirk. With a nod to Izuku and a stiff bow to Izashi, Amajiki turns back to the festival and disappears into the crowd. The moment he's alone with Izashi, all of the energy, the backbone, the determination melts out of him. Years in the facility, years of painful tests and solitary nights and kids that were nice and then ambivalent and then mean, watch over Izuku and threaten to drown him. He grabs Izashi's hand and holds on to dear life, and when he asks, Can we go? His voice is weak and wobbly, and he can barely hear it over the static rising in his head. Izuku? Worry coats Izashi's voice, and when he turns to face Izuku properly, his features as well. Hey, whoa, I thought you were okay. What's wrong? What happened? But Izuku doesn't know how to answer that without breaking down, and he can't do that right now. He shakes his head, biting hard on his lip because he can't get the pain in his palms when he clenches his fist anymore. Please, he whispers, and he's definitely begging. Please, please, I can't. I'll tell you when we get when we get home, but I don't want to be here anymore. It takes all of Izuku's willpower to not start crying right then and there. Okay, Izashi agrees immediately, squeezing Izuku's hand in his own. Okay, Izuku, don't worry about it. Let's get home then, okay? Carefully, but thankfully, not slowly, Izashi leads him and Izuku away from the festival and back toward the apartment. Silence overtakes them as they walk down the streets, passing by shops and a few civilians with the occasional car speeding past. Izuku clings tightly to Izashi's hand and doesn't even register the concerned glances that his guardian keeps throwing at him. He just repeats in his head that he can't break down right now, can't collapse in the middle of the street, can't have another panic attack so soon after the last one, isn't safe until he's home. He just needs to get home. When they reach the apartment complex, Izuku fights down the desire to go sprinting up the stairs only because he doesn't have a key and would have to wait for Hisashi anyway. But the moment the doors open, Izuku pushes his way inside. Already his breasts are coming faster, tears springing to his eyes as he trips out of his shoes and looks around for Aizawa through his panic. You're back early. What happened? Aizawa's still in the living room, sitting up and bent over the table like he's working on something but he immediately moves to get up when he sees Izuku come into the apartment. Unable to answer yet, Izuku walks right up to Aizawa and throws his arms around him, collapsing into his chest with a sharp sob. Fear makes Izuku tremble so bad that he's practically shivering, and panic is clawing its way down his throat again, threatening to take him apart from the inside out. Izuku tightens his arms and cries, uninhibited, when Aizawa hugs him back and guides them both to the floor. Easy, it's okay. Breathe, Izuku. Aizawa's voice is low and soothing. He rubs a slow circle into Izuku's back as he cries and shakes apart. Izuku tries to listen to him, to breathe deep like he knows he should, but he's been choking down the panic for too long now, and it has him in a vice-like grip. What happened? Aizawa asks again. Slowly he begins to rock side to side, guiding Izuku along with him. When Izuku only makes a choked noise, Aizawa shushes him and rests his cheek on top of Izuku's head. Izashi, tell me what happened. Izuku hears Hisashi settle on the floor nearby, but he doesn't lift or turn his head to look. I don't know. Hisashi answers, and he sounds as upset as Izuku's ever heard him. We got separated in the crowd, and he apparently had a panic attack, but thankfully another kid had found him and got him to calm down enough to call me. He said he was fine, but the moment the other kid went back to the festival... Okay, Aizawa says, and he slips into his teacher voice, which is also very much his parent voice. Izuku, I need you to breathe for me. I know you're scared, but you're home now. You're safe. Breathe with me, kid. Aizawa inhales long and deep, and Izuku scrambles to match it. He knows he needs to calm down. It's just hard. The gentle press of Aizawa's hand on his back resumes its circular motions over his shoulder blades, and he feels a second hand, larger, his ashis, settle onto his lower back for reassurance. Held close by Aizawa and supported by his ashi, Izuku slowly but surely pieces himself back together. I'm sorry. Izuku whispers once he can. His throat is still tight, and he can't stop sniffling, and 
Amahaki is a fierce presence against his chest, but at least he can breathe. Don't apologize, Aizawa says with a shake of his head. His cheek is pressed into and messing up Izuku's hair. Apologies are for when you did something wrong. He pulls back, slowly, hands coming up to Izuku's cheeks to wipe away the remnants of his tears. Can you tell us what happened? Izuku nods rough and jerky enough that Aizawa has to move his hands or risk poking Izuku in the eyes. Izashi keeps his hand in place on his back, though, rubbing gently along his spine. We were walking, and I stepped behind Izashi to make room for some people coming toward us. He scrubs his face, digging the heels of his hands into his eyes and leaving them there. I saw... He was far away, but I saw... Izuku shakes his head, fingernails digging into his forehead, but he bends forward at the waist. Steady, warm hands settle over his own and pull them away. Izuku looks up into Aizawa's eyes, hesitant at first, before grounding himself there instead of in the pain that he had used as a crutch his whole life. Breathe, Aizawa reminds him. His thumbs brush over Izuku's knuckles, right on the seam between bandage and skin. An inhale, shaky. An exhale, steady. It was one of the doctors from the facility. The words tumbled out of Izuku too fast, but no less sure. I know it was. He... He has a scar that I gave him when he pushed me too far with Amahaki. Izuku traces the path of the scar over his own face, eyes unfocused but still directed toward Aizawa. I wouldn't mistake anyone else for him. I see him every night in my nightmares, goes unsaid. He feels like he should say that, but the words get caught in his throat, and they won't come out. He knows that Aizawa is aware of his nightmares, though they haven't talked about them much. Izuku's barely brought them up to Kiyumi-san. Izuku. Izuku, focus on me. Aizawa says, bringing his hands up again to Izuku's cheeks. It's easier this time to meet Aizawa's gaze, to hold it and breathe and push past the static screaming in his ears. I'm sorry this happened. Izuku opens his mouth to argue that it's not Aizawa's fault, that it's hypocritical to tell Izuku to only apologize when he does something wrong and then go and do this, but his guardian cuts him off. No. I did do something wrong. I didn't check with Nezu and Tsukuji to make sure that everyone who hurt you was tracked down. That's on me. It's not your fault. Izuku insists the moment that he can get a word in edgewise. Izuku. Dad! He's never said that out loud before. Never called Aizawa his dad before. And Izuku's not going to freak out about it now. He's not. He's not. This is important, and he needs to say it. He can freak out about this later. Plus, it has the intended effect of getting Aizawa to stop arguing jaw snapping shut and eyes widening just a fraction. It's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault. Suka's voice has gone soft, quiet in the aftermath of calling Aizawa his dad out loud, and Aizawa just staring at him dumbly. Carefully, Izuku takes Aizawa's hands off his cheeks, then drops one of them so that he can reach back for Hisashi, who quickly takes Izuku's hand and squeezes. Izuku feels like he's right on the edge of tipping into hysterics, but in the best kind of way. He has two really great dads who care about him enough to take blame for things that are absolutely out of their control, who drop everything to make sure Izuku's okay, who upended their lives to take him into the safety of their arms. He wants to cry again, but he shakes his head and holds the tears back. I love you both. It's almost strange to find the words leave his mouth so easily. He's never known love before this, never felt close to anyone at the facility, was never given a parental figure to latch onto, but he knows like it's an instinctive part of himself, of being human, that he loves Aizawa and Hisashi dearly. And, and you can yell at Nezu later or whatever, but don't stop blaming yourself for things you can't change. For a moment, silence takes the three of them under, its wing, and Izuku sits in it, just this side of uncomfortable with both Aizawa and Hisashi staring at him. But then Hisashi wraps an arm around Izuku and buries a kiss in his hair, and Aizawa leans in to hug them both. I'm going to yell at Nezu, Aizawa says, and his voice is as rough as it is quiet. And have a strong conversation with Tsukuji, but all right, I... He huffs out a laugh and presses his own kiss to Izuku's temple. I just want to keep you safe. I'll try not to take too much blame for everything, though. We love you too, Izuku, Hisashi says, something that Aizawa might not be able to get out on his own. Izuku hugs his dad so tight it feels like his arms might fall off. He doesn't care that it's hot in the apartment and that they're sweating, pile of limbs that they've made. He doesn't care that his cheeks are tear-stained or that Izashi is quietly crying in relief against his shoulder, hell, at the moment. He doesn't even care that not all of the doctors have been caught and arrested for all the shit they did to him and the other kids. He knows that Nezu is working on it. He knows that he'll get a call from him tomorrow with an apology. 
He has his dad's. He's safe. He's loved. That's enough. All right, everyone. This concludes Chapter 8 of Swallow the Stars. Chapter 9 will be next. Hope you guys are enjoying this one still. And as always, thank you so much for listening.